Hey guys, I'm really excited for today's video because I'm going to talk to you guys about lace fronts. Lace fronts are super popular right now. I know that I am talking to an audience of people that range from uh, people that have been wearing hair for a long time and people that are just new to the wig, topper, helper hair lifestyle. Lace front is that nice, front hairline that you get that makes it look like the hair is growing right out of your scalp. Now there can be just a lace front which goes pretty much from temple to temple. You could also see wigs that are full lace so the lace goes all the way around. Unfortunately while lace fronts are really really awesome and they look super realistic um, they can have a tendency to fray. Now I have here a Kristen wig from John Renault. She's actually in really great shape and you wouldn't really know that I wore this wig for about nine months straight to work every single day. I did end up steaming her so she's super soft and everything but the front hairline which has not been cut back or anything, it's still factory cut, has started to fray. See how it has started to fray a little bit? Maybe I can zoom in. Whoops. Yeah, totally. Okay, so you guys see that fraying that's going on? I'm gonna tell you exactly how to avoid that. So let me, ooh, hey. And for the record, today's hair is Sarah by John Renault in Venice Blonde. And she's pretty much like straight out of the box. I did use the John Renault wide tooth comb with a little bit of water just to get the curls nice and defined. And then I've got a little bobby pin up here just to hold the front out of my face. Some common issues that cause the fraying in the lace front. And unfortunately, if I knew when I used to wear this wig, what I know now, I wouldn't have this situation on my hands. The wig doesn't fit properly. And my head just happens to be really small. All of my wigs tend to just be average size, unless I specifically buy one with a petite cap, which I only have like maybe two that have a petite cap. And so for that reason, when I move my forehead or just go on about my day, there is a little bit of movement in between my forehead and the lace front. And over time, think about it, I wore this wig for about nine months straight to work every single day. That friction will cause lace to come apart. The way the lace is made, it's made in a crisscross pattern and it's actually like welded together and that's why you see just the tips kind of starting to come apart. What I suggest as a fix for that is, first of all, you need to know your size. I have my measuring tape here. What you want to do is, I have a video on my channel about how to measure your head for wigs. You'll be able to determine what size wig you should be buying. From there, the next time you make your wig purchase, you can go ahead and pick out the right size. If you're like me, and you end up having like a petite size head and the wig that you want doesn't come in a petite cap, then the next step would be to invest in some wig tape. Now there's all different kinds of wig tape. There's the blue tape, which I like also. Um, this one is nice because you can cut it into strips. And what I like to do is just um, put it on the inside right up front here, maybe a little ways back, and that prevents the front lace from moving around on your forehead, thereby preventing that issue with the friction. I also have a tape, a tape, I also have a video on how to use wig tape on my channel and you guys can check that out. Another way that you can fray your wig is honestly in just how you put it on and take it off. So if you're one of those people that handles the wig through the front like this, try to be mindful of not doing that from now on. The way I usually put my wig on is I will hold it by the nape like this and then I will very carefully, well, I'll put it on like this and then I'll tilt my head back and then once it's on my head, I will hold it by the ear tabs and uh, place it right at my hairline and adjust accordingly. Notice that throughout that entire process, 
I am not manhandling or touching the lace front. That right there is a good way to be extra gentle on that lace so that it lasts you a very long time. Forgot to mention, when you're using the wig tape, you'll want to be super careful when you're pulling the wig off. You don't want to just yank it off your head, right? You'll want to very carefully at the um, ear tabs, use your fingers and separate the wig from your forehead. Immediately, once you take off that wig, that um, tape is still going to be on there and sticky. Um, you can use a product. John Renault has one. It's called Lace Let Go. And what I like to do is just take like a Q-tip and then spray Lace Let Go on it. And then I will gently weasel it in through to detach the lace. And then I'll also use some of that Lace Let Go very gently to remove that piece of tape. Okay, another Another thing you can do is make sure that you're being super mindful of the tools that you're using on your wigs and near your lace front. A tool like this, the wide tooth comb is awesome. There is also the John Renault paddle brush. You've seen me use it in a bunch of other videos. That one's okay, but you don't want to be rough. Anything that's like boar hair or natural bristles is a big no-no. Another thing you can do is when you're washing your wig, just be extra careful on the lace front. I have a video about how to wash the lace and you will shampoo and then just very gently with your hands wash like this another thing too is when your lace starts getting kind of frayed like this it's gonna be super itchy and you're gonna want to stick your finger in there and satisfy that gnawing itch resist the urge to do that as soon as I started wearing lace fronts I started wearing a wig cap underneath and that seems to help it a lot it's discomfort some people say that they're very itchy or they're scratchy and since I am bald I completely understand my way to overcome this like I said is the wig caps but also I notice that when I do wear the wig tape especially if I'm wearing a piece that's just a little bit too big and I feel that movement the wig tape really helps to hold it down that itchiness doesn't occur you can use translucent face powder like the kind that you use to set your makeup right so I use this translucent powder underneath my eyes but then I also dust a little bit of that around my hairline and that also helps with the discomfort that they'll kind of like bunch up like they won't lay flat on my forehead and that can be super annoying because it doesn't look real <laughs> you know uh, you want to Make sure your piece looks as real as possible. Again, I feel like I'm a broken record right now, but that comes down to your wig not fitting properly. On the back of your wig, on the back of most wigs, you will see these little tabs. These are Velcro tabs, and you can use these to adjust the fit of your wig. If the lace front is still sticking up, not laying flat on your forehead, then a suggestion I have again is to go for the tape. Oh, another thing is how you store your wig. Hello, totally forgot about that. I've noticed like sometimes if I'm being super hasty and I am putting my wig on the wig stand, I'll go back later and I'll notice that the lace front was either like curled up or curled down. And then when I take it off the wig stand, it's like stuck that way. And I'm like, crap that right there is how you cause that issue be super mindful when you store your piece either in the box or on a wig stand that that lace is not compromised not folded not bent in any type of way so that it stays nice and flat let's say that I just got this wig out of the box and there is maybe about a centimeter worth of lace that's showing that doesn't have any hair attached to it that makes the wig look kind of fake. This, ladies and gentlemen, is something that you need to do at your own peril. Uh, it is not something that I recommend that you do at home. We all know how expensive these wigs are. I do suggest you taking it to someone who works on wigs to do this. However, if you want to attempt this at home, I know a lot of us in the hair community are all about our DIY. The first thing you need is a set of pinking shears. Pinking shears are the scissors that have like the little zigzag teeth. And the reason why is because the pinking shears are not going to cut the 
lace in a straight line. That zigzag pattern helps reinforce that welded lace. You can use a white pencil to draw exactly where on your hairline you're going to cut and then from there you can very carefully turn the wig inside out and cut. Do not, it, okay here's, here's the deal. You see where the lace front meets the moleskin ear tab? You do not want to compromise that connection there. So if you're going to cut I would probably say only cut like a little sliver here. I would not cut all the way out to this side. It's not going to do anything for you anyway. So you want to just keep it a nice even line. Let me show you on a wig like my frayed one very, very, very carefully. See? And now I have this nice zigzag pattern you see there and that will keep it from fraying further another thing you can do is if you your lace front's kind of visible and you don't want it to be but you don't want to cut it either is just use a little bit of powder to kind of um, take away the shiny shininess from your forehead so that the transition to the lace is a lot less noticeable I am going to make a segue into my nightly skincare routine so one of the most common questions that I get on my Instagram is what skincare do you use to wash my face I am currently Currently using the fresh sugar strawberry exfoliating face wash it is by the company fresh this is new I was using their soy cleanser for a while which I love and I will still continue to use that but this strawberry one is delicious it is a scrub slash face wash I'm still using some micellar water to get rid of the eye makeup so I'm not rubbing that area very hard but this is so nice it smells so good now this one is by the company the ordinary oh by the way guys you can buy all the stuff on Sephora the ordinary this is a glycolic acid 7% toning solution and this is so Here's the difference between exfoliants. This is a physical exfoliant because it has the little like beads in it, right? And then this one is a chemical exfoliant because it's got glycolic acid. Now what I'll do is put this on a round little cotton pad and after I wash my face, I will go ahead and put some of that on and then give it a second to sink in and then I go for my face oil. The one that I'm loving right now is by Herbivore. This is kind of expensive. I'm sorry, I'm bougie about my skincare, but I am 35 years old and I do not have any wrinkles. So, hallelujah. But this is the Herbivore La Peace facial oil. I post about it all the time on my Instagram. And I will use, this is gonna last me forever. I've been using this for a few months now and you can see how little I've used. I, every night, I take six drops of this oil and it's got a little dropper and then I will drop it into my palm and then I will rub it on the parts of my face and then I recently picked up the herbivore I think I'm saying this right the gua, gua sha this is the rose quartz one first of all it is so pretty this was like $18 and I got it again at Sephora it is you hear that it's an actual stone and this is created in a way to massage the face so once I have the oil on my face I take my gua sha and I'm mostly trying to focus on like this like jawline I want it like like sharp jawline um, unfortunately jowls kind of run in my family so I'm trying to like lift and the corners of my mouth have started to get like a little mm, droopy so I take the gua sha and the way that you want to do this, so the benefit of this I guess I should start with is that it helps with inflammation and sagginess and the tone of the face and just keeping everything just, you know, circulated and fresh, right? I don't 
much really works but I can tell you guys I feel a difference I really do from before I do it to after it's like my skin just kind of wakes up and it gets that circulation going it is essentially a massage for your face uh, can that be bad I don't think so wash up you want to go up right so this fits perfectly into the contour of the cheek so I'll go up like that and then this I'll go up in the neck too and then just up 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 and then this little like bumpy part is good for like the brow area because it kind of like hugs the brow bone like that and it just feels amazing I honestly feel like after I do this routine at night and it doesn't take me that long at all but I feel like I've just been at the spa so I Highly recommend this. Uh, guys, I'm not sponsored for any of these products. So I guess that's it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below or go to my Instagram. It's rosemary underscore fit. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.